In spite of the bad weekend, the following week brought me good news. I received an A on my midterm exam in Spanish composition and reading and an A- minus on my English essay. Good improvement, Dr. Quinn wrote below the letter grade. I could hardly contain myself. I ran back to my room feeling as though I were floating on air. I turned on the radio and listened to rock and roll while I cleaned the room. Are you tired of sitting around your chante, your casita, with nothing to do and getting bored? Are you arguing with your girlfriend about what lousy movie to see? Or maybe you're new to the area, need some exercise, work too much, or maybe just need to hit the social scene in a funky environment? Orale pues, don't be square. Come to Cervantes Hall in Sunnyvale and do the Watusi. Here's little Eva with the locomotion to get you in the mood. It sounded like the place to go. I jotted down the name and address on a scrap of paper, stuck it in my shirt pocket, and continued straightening our room. Here's Are You Lonesome Tonight by Elvis Presley. If you're a loner, come to Cervantes Hall tonight and you'll get rid of your blues, man. I guarantee it. I had become a fan of Elvis as many years before when I was in the eighth grade, struggling with the English language and trying to fit in with my classmates. Miss Ellis, our homeroom teacher, asked us to come up with a skit to perform in front of the class. I saw this as my opportunity to be accepted by my classmates who were rock and roll fanatics, and I volunteered to lip sync Elvis Presley's Treat Me Like a Fool. I was a hit, and so was Elvis for me from then on. Hey, the place looks great, Smokey said as he entered the room, soaked in sweat after playing a pickup game of basketball. Looks like you could use a cleaning yourself. What I need is rest. He sat down in his desk chair to take off his grimy clothes. There's no rest for the wicked. Remember our deal? What deal, he said, glancing at me and throwing his sweaty and grimy socks on the floor. We agreed that if I went to the Santa Clara St. Mary's game, which I did, you'd go with me to a dance. There's a dance at Cervantes Hall. The name sounds more like a library, he said. You're not trying to trick me, are you? No, I am serious. I heard it announced on the radio. It sounds like fun. What's gotten into you, he said, looking puzzled. I feel like celebrating. I got an A- minus on my English paper. Wow, you did better than me. Better than I, you mean, I said. Smokey and I got ready for our adventure. I put on a pair of black polyester pants, a white shirt, and black pointed boots. The trousers fit a bit tighter than they had a few weeks before because I was eating more than I did at home and not doing any physical work. And the food in the cafeteria was all you could eat for the same price. I rubbed on Three Roses hair tonic, which my brother and I used at home whenever we went out. I then splashed on Old Spice aftershave lotion and put on my tan corduroy jacket. Smokey dressed in tan pants, a white and blue striped shirt, a navy blue sport coat, and a pair of brown shoes. Wow, those are mean-looking boots, Smokey said, scanning me up and down and lightly scratching his head. I was not surprised by his reaction. After a quick supper in Nobili, we hurried to the bus stop on the El Camino, the main road that cut across the campus and ran from San Jose to San Francisco. We knew Cervantes Hall was in Sunnyvale, but we did not know what bus to take to get there. We asked the driver of each bus that stopped if it was going north to Sunnyvale. After waiting and waiting and seeing several buses stop and go, we finally got the right one and arrived in Sunnyvale after traveling for more than half an hour. What's the address? Smokey asked as we got off the bus. I got it here. I reached into my shirt pocket. Oh, no. I left it in my other shirt. What? You forgot? How could you? I am sorry. We wandered around the city, asking for directions to Cervantes Hall. No one had heard of it. Smokey began to doubt its existence and was ready to quit and go back. Let's not give up, I insisted. 
Someone has to know. Sure, the radio announcer. If we can't find someone who knows in the next 15 minutes, we'll go back, I said, trying to appease him. Luckily, after four more tries, we finally ran into a young man who knew where it was. When he heard me say Cervantes Hall, he asked me if I spoke Spanish. When I said yes, he gave me the directions in Spanish. It was his native language, too. We're in luck, I said to Smokey. Follow me. I know where I'm going. You'd better. The sky was dark and cloudy. We walked for several blocks, away from the center of town, until we spotted the green and white neon sign of Cervantes Hall on the side of the large barn-like building. Outside the double-door entrance, a large muscular man with long, thick, brown, wavy hair stood guard. He wore a black t-shirt bearing the name of the dance hall and had a tattoo with a skull and crossbones on his forearm. Guys dressed in jeans and white t-shirts hung around outside the hall, eyeing the girls and trying to decide whether or not to spend the money to go in. They laughed and joked and swayed to the music that blasted through the doors. Their shiny long black hair, combed back on the side, made them look like some of my friends and neighbors in Bonetti Ranch. I felt at home. We bought our tickets and walked in. The loud, vibrating music and dancing reminded me of the vets' dances my brother and I went to in Santa Maria. The live band played rock and roll music non-stop. The lead singer jumped around the stage and gyrated. Screams punctuated the music. Smokey seemed nervous at first, but once he started dancing, he did not stop, and neither did I. We competed with each other, trying different dance moves. We did the twist, the mashed potato, the locomotion, the watusi, and many others. We were having so much fun that we forgot we had to be back in our room by one o'clock, and it was close to midnight before we checked the time. Rushing out in a panic, we traced our route back through empty and dimly lit streets to the bus stop on the El Camino. We waited at the bus stop for several minutes, but no bus came by. It was beginning to drizzle. We're in deep trouble, Smokey said, glancing at his wristwatch and pacing up and down. We sure are. I craned to spot a bus. No luck. Only cars and trucks drove by once in a while. We decided to hitchhike down El Camino. Since he was easier to see, Smokey followed behind me as we walked backwards, holding out our hands with a thumb up. When no cars were in sight, we jogged. The faster we ran, the wetter we got. Every time we saw two headlights approaching us, we would get our hopes up. Finally, a red sports car passed us, slowed down, and stopped. Smokey and I raced to it looking like two wet, shaggy, stray dogs. The driver rolled down the window and asked, Where are you guys headed? The University of Santa Clara, Smokey and I said in unison. Get in, I'm headed that way. We crammed in, shivering and wiping the rain from our faces. So, you're at Santa Clara. You guys don't have many girls there. Too bad. I'm at Stanford, he added. I did not know anything about Stanford, but he sounded like he was boasting. He was stocky with short blonde hair and small, plump hands. I'm on my way to a party at San Jose State. The girls are more fun there than at Stanford. He continued talking and looking straight ahead, not giving Smokey or me a chance to say anything. His superiority bothered me. He came to a screeching halt at the entrance to Santa Clara. Here you are. We hurriedly climbed out and thanked him. The ride lasted a few minutes, but it seemed like an hour. I was glad to be back and on time for room check.